This week's Sedra is Sedra's Noah. If your friend jumped off a bridge, would you also jump off a bridge? As children, we heard this exasperated response from our parents more times than we care to admit. Our cries of, well, Joey did it first, or mom, you just don't get it, fell on deaf ears. How could our parents not understand the tremendous pull of peer pressure? If only they were in our shoes, they too wouldn't be able to stand up to the pressure of their friends. As parents, we look at our children and experience the exact same exasperation as our own parents. We've become our worst nightmare. We don't get it. We're the unrealistic parents who can't understand their children's experiences. We tell ourselves that we understand better than our children. We're smarter, we're better, we're more discerning, and we know that no matter the social pressure, we must do the right thing. Then why, in the face of social pressure, don't we do the right thing? In Sedras Noach, the t- story is told of Noach, a man who is more righteous than the evil norms around him. The society was one of Hamas, not the terrorists, but ironically enough, the biblical Hebrew term for evil is Hamas. The people were guilty of the most heinous sins and the most insensitive of actions. They killed and stole small amounts, less than prosecutable theft that enabled them to bend it freely off their fellow man, but still not get in trouble themselves. Noah was chosen by God to be saved because of his righteous behavior. There is a well-known debate amongst our sages of whether or not Noah was merely righteous in relation to the generation that he lived in, or if he would be considered righteous even in comparison with later generations. While there's no answer to this debate, the Radak, an early scholar, commented on Noah's righteousness. He explained that Noah's righteousness was really threefold. First, he acted in God's ways, kind and merciful. He also acted out of a love of God, doing the right thing because it was the right thing. Second, he didn't allow his instincts or his emotions to get the best of him. He led his life with his intellect. The third level of Noach's righteousness was the one most applicable to this video. Noach, the Radak wrote, was able to withstand the pressure of those around him. The evil social norms of those around him weren't attractive to Noach. Maimonides wrote about social pressure, it's a natural tendency of man to be influenced in his ideas and its conduct by his neighbors and to follow the behavior of the people of his area. Therefore, the Rabbim wrote, it's important for people to be in the company of the righteous, to sit near the wise in order to learn from their conduct, and to distance themselves from the evil doers who follow the path of darkness in order not to learn from their conduct. If a state, if a man will be in a state where evil customs prevail and where people are not following righteous ways, righteous ways, excuse me, the Rabbim said, he should go to a place where the inhabitants are righteous and they follow the way of God. To return to our original point about social pressure, it is the height of hypocrisy to claim that we, parents, don't bend to social pressure. Peer pressure didn't stop at high school graduation, it continues for life. It merely transforms itself into different shapes and manifestations. It behooves us to remember that as much as we are frustrated with our children's following their peers seemingly blindly, we're probably doing the same. It's time to recognize that our our own hypocrisy about peer pressure, whether it is in the clothes that we buy, the car that we drive, or the social habits we practice, we're probably just as bad as our children. What Noah teaches us is that we have to have the courage and the fortitude to stand up to the social pressures around us. Shabbat Shalom.